Hey, can you say that? I hope so. I hope so. Death couldn't hold him. I love that line. Man, y'all, how are you? It's so good to see your faces this morning. I hope you are excited to be here. We're always so, so thrilled and excited, looking so forward to what the Lord has in store for today. So uh, y'all please sing out. Let him hear you this morning as we begin. this in, uh, I think, for a first time last week, God so loved. So uh, for those of you who don't know it, man, it's an easy one to pick up on. God so loved. Y'all sing this with us. Come to the 
just praise you. I thank you today so much for the great love that you have, a love like no other, the greatest love of all, a love so great that you uh, died, you gave your life so that, that we could have life everlasting. You are indeed our living hope, and we just praise you and thank you today for how you love us like you do. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Without that, we wouldn't have a chance. So thank you, Father God. Pray you just move in this place as we continue to lift your name high. May you be glorified. It's in Jesus' precious name I do pray. Amen.
something's wrong, right? <laughs> it does say in scripture, it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's exciting. That's exciting. That says it all. Our living hope. And uh, I hope that you know that None of us are good, right? None. None of us are good at all. But yet because of the great love that he has for us, his goodness, it literally just chases us. It's running after us at all times. So just know that uh, no matter what your situation, no matter uh, maybe what you might be going through in your life, because every one of us do from time to time. Sometimes you may, may feel like, man, where are you, God? Once again, I just always want to remind you, he's right there. And he's wanting to show you his mercy and his grace and his goodness and all that he has to offer you so that you can realize that even when we might be at a low point, he can fill us with all that he offers. Just want to encourage you with that. You have led me through the fire, and 
pray father as I sit there I think about the prodigal son when he finally came home when we finally come home we see the father running to us Lord you've been running to us and after us this whole time but a lot of us have been running from you Lord and I thank you that you finally wake us up with your goodness Lord, your word says your goodness, the goodness of God leads us to repentance, Lord. Thank you that we are saturated in your goodness. If we would just open our eyes and look. Lord, I thank you that we can gather together as believers today. And we can worship you. We can be reminded of just how good you are. And Lord, we can dive into your word, your word that's lasted forever and will contend. Lord, grass withers, flowers fade, but your word will stand forever. So Lord, I pray that you would speak today. Lord, that you would plant seeds all over this place. God, I, take what is, I pray you take what is said, Lord, coming straight from my mouth today. And make it your very words, Lord, as you sketch on the hearts and minds of your people today. Lord, your word is powerful and it's living and it's active. So, Lord, we crave you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Good morning, church family. If you have your Bible, let's go to Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52. So we're lacking a few ameners up in here this morning, so uh, you got to take up their slack. So you don't know, you've been in training. 
you know, and that'd been a good place to say, amen. 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 Yeah. I promise you, if you was up here doing what I am doing right now, you would want some response. <laughs> Y'all don't know who I used to be. I used to be so shy, I would not even order a hamburger. Like, I would have to get a friend to take me to go order a hamburger. And God's got me standing in front of y'all. That is not natural for me. I promise you. <laughs> Amen. Isaiah, okay, 52. We're going to be in verse 9 here in just a second. Now, Isaiah, he's an old school prophet, old school preacher uh, before Jesus. And that's the way God used to talk to people back in the day. He would speak to them, to, to us, and to the people through the, through the man of God. I hope that makes sense. So when you read this, you're reading what God is saying to the man of God. Make sense? Now, he says something here that really grabs my attention, and I hope it grabs yours too, starting in verse 9, Isaiah 52. Everybody there? Amen. All right. Amen. It says, break forth. Anybody ever just broke forth? Break forth into what? Joy. Joy. And what else? Singing together. What did we just do? We broke forth, didn't we? I hope some of us did. We broke forth with joy and singing. Listen, he's talking to, to Israel here. He says, break forth into joy and to singing and you notice what he says, you waste places of Jerusalem. Waste places. When something is laid waste, it's just destroyed, right? Why are we singing and having joy, wasted places? Because it says, the Lord has comforted his people and he has what? Redeemed Jerusalem. Jerusalem would be uh, the capital city there, the city of David of Jerusalem. So this is good news for Jerusalem, right? This is good news for Israel. God has comforted you and God has redeemed you. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? Now, if you went back and you read the previous verses, it talks about Israel being led out of captivity of Egypt, out of captivity of Babylon, kind of lays it out. If you were a chained up person, you would love to hear that you've been set free. Amen. If you were a wasted place and know that you could turn into a fruitful garden, you would say amen to that. So what, that's what he's saying. He said, I've led my people out of all these places. Now, he's speaking of something that brings you joy and brings us to, to singing. I, I don't know what else I can do to know that I've been set free but to shout and to dance and to sing and to raise my hands. I mean, come on, right? So notice what he says next. Because he speaks of this same salvation and this redemption reaching out somewhere else. Watch verse 10. The Lord has made bare his holy arm. In other words, I'm going to show you what the armor of the Lord can do. He says, in the eyes of all the nations, not just, and to all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Now, you think when people were reading that back in the day, God's children, knew, they were God's children. But to know that God would reach out his salvation to everybody, that's some good news right there, especially to us. Because we were not Israel. We were not God's people. But through Jesus, we are now. Isn't that beautiful? So, then in verse 1, skip to uh, 53 verse 1 now. He asks this question. He asked this question. Let's just read it. Who has believed our report? Think about it. Isaiah is saying, hey, are y'all believing what I'm saying here? Are you believing that uh, 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 salvation and redemption has come to Israel? And do you believe what I'm saying? That salvation is coming to the ends of the earth? He's saying, do you believe that? That's what he's asking. And when he says, our, do you believe our report? He's talking about the, the him and the rest of the prophets because they've been preaching this for a long time now. He says, y'all believe in what we're saying? That everybody and everyone can, can be saved, can, can, can be redeemed? And watch what he says. Who has believed our report? Now, let's fast forward to our day. There's a lot of reporting going on. There's all kind of reports out there, right? But here's the question today. Which one are you going to believe? Are you going to believe God's report? This is very important, church. 
Are you going to believe God's report? It's the same report that has been challenged at, at, by every angle, by ev- just about everyone, all through the times of the seasons to right now. It's still being challenged, but it stood the test of time, hadn't it? Amen. We still gather today over this report that we're reading today. Yeah. Or are we believing the many opinions, the theories, and the lies of all kinds. Y'all know what they say. Everybody has opinion just that, like they have a rear end, right? Everybody's got it. You can even take that a little further. We all have opinions, right? But are we believing our opinions or the opinions of the, the schooled ones or whatever? The, the, all the, are we believing that? Listen, when a smart person says something that is not lining up with the Word of God, I would call them not smart anymore. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you right now. You can, amen? amen. <laughs> Whose report are you believing? Which one? Because confused men who lie and give other theories, they're just puppets and pawns of the enemy, I promise you. So my question this morning, whose, whose report are you believing? Now stay with me. Then he says in verse 1, To whom has the arm, the arm of the Lord, been revealed? Think about it. He's saying, okay, who, y'all believe in our report about salvation and redemption and comfort? Okay. Then he, then he, then he raises another question. To whom, who, who the folks can see God's arm at work? Who are the folks that can see God's hand at, at work? Okay. Let me put these two together, and I'll put this on the screen for you. The arm of the Lord is revealed to those that believe his report. Did you get that? You can't miss that. You can't miss that. The arm, if you want to see the hand of God, if you want to see the arm of God, then you have to be the ones that believe His report. Amen. Okay? Okay? Let's just say this. Have you... I'm looking at you. I'm talking to you. Have you seen the arm of the Lord in your life? Okay? There's a reason for that. How often do you see the arm of the Lord revealed in your life? It, it, yeah, yeah. If it's all the time, there's a reason for that. Do you know why you see the arm of the Lord at every crook and cranny in your life? It's because you believe His report. You believe His principles. You believe His promises. You believe what He says in His Word. And you see God in every little bitty thing. Why is that? Because you believe what He says in His Word. Amen. Right? And you, Just like the song. The evidence of God's goodness is all around in our life. It's all over our life. The evidence piles up on top of each other. It's all around in our life. Now, if you don't see the hand of God in your life, you need to read His report closer. Huh? If you don't see the Lord's arm in your life every day from the moment you swing your legs out of the bed and put it on the floor and you go... Breath of God. Thank you, Lord. Hey, thank you that I got to sleep last night. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I mean, uh, thank, you that I had a, thank you that I had a bed to sleep in. Thank you that there was a roof over my head and I had something on the wall that controlled the temperature. These are things that we forget. Oh, thank you, Lord, that I have some shoes to put on and some drawers to put on now. Especially if you sleep in your skivvies, you know. So, listen, listen. Did you, we, we ain't even got out of bed yet. You see the arm of the Lord, you ain't even got out of bed yet. Then you walk in there and you see your babies. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, my goodness. Really? You do realize that's God's child. Been entrusted to you to raise them. Oh, my goodness. Is that the arm of the Lord? Absolutely. He says they're like arrows in our quiver. Uh Uh-oh. They're chances to make an impact for the kingdom of God. As your children. Should we go on? I mean, we could just keep going on. The arm of the Lord. The arm, but you're not going to see that if you don't believe his report. Because everything I just said, you read in the Word. Y'all with me today? Okay. So then Isaiah begins to give the report, watch this, of how this salvation and how this comfort and how this redemption is going to come. And here's how he starts talking. He starts talking about a person. Now, you got to remember, if you're in the Old Testament... You know, okay, uh, Moses led us out of Egypt. 
You know, King David, he, he killed the giant. He did his thing, right? So, so they're believing. But let me tell you something. This person is not King David, and it's not Moses. Okay? So watch what Isaiah begins to explain and where this salvation is coming from. Are y'all with me? For, verse 2, 53, verse 2, for he. First of all, you, the cat ought to be let out of the bag right there. If you have, if you have the capital... H in your Bible. I love the capital version because whenever God or Jesus is mentioned, it's a capital. That makes sense? For he, we already know the cat's out the bag, We're talking about Jesus. He shall grow up before him as a tender plant, a root out of dry ground. Why is he saying that? Because this was a waste place when he got here. And he's a root. He's a root. He has no form or comeliness when you see him. There's no beauty that we should desire him. When Jesus started growing up and becoming a young man and into being who he is, he didn't come all jacked up, good looking, you know what I'm saying? He, he was just a normal person. It, there's, there's nothing, the Bible says there's nothing that draw, drawn us to his appearance. Make sense? Nothing is drawing us to his appearance. It's all talking about his appearance here. Watch this. He was the guy probably made fun of when you read the next verse. He is despised and rejected by men. How does that make you feel? Okay, wait a minute. Remember, Jesus stepped into this earth. He, he had to wrap himself in flesh, so he didn't want to freak everybody out, so he was born by a woman, a virgin, by the way. He grew up as a little baby, right? And he took the form of a man. And he lived on this earth just like we do. Okay? God in the flesh, remember? Okay? He was despised, he was rejected probably as a child, made fun of, or whatever. The creator of the world. Who created the world? Jesus, right? He spoke everything by him, through him. All things are made by him, Jesus. Steps into the world that he created amongst the people he created, and they bullied him. Can you even make that connection? Oh, I, I gave you life, but you're going to bully me? I gave you this beautiful earth, and you're going to bully me? You see what I'm saying? Okay. He was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. You know, it's like those people you see at Brookshire's, and you see them, and you're like, let me go to the next aisle. I, ain't, I, don't, say, I'm, I don't say I do that. <laughs> I got some bad stuff sometimes. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Well, I see people do that to me. That's what I'm trying to say. They're the preacher. <laughs> hey, oh, hey. You know, don't want to see him right now. I don't want to talk to him right now. Let me put up what I got in my buggy. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. <laughs> oh, help me, Lord. I'm just a... I'm just a man. I'm just a, just a guy, man, you know. I like to hunt, fish, and eat. I love Jesus. I mean, what? Anyway. <laughs> okay, watch this. Verse 4. Surely. Listen, this is way before Jesus. This is a prophet of God telling us this is how salvation is coming to the world. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet when we see him, we see him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted like, what would you do wrong? But no, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our mess, our iniquity. The chastisement, which is not a good word that, that allowed us to have peace, was on him. And by his stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. Come on, somebody. Okay. Are you beginning to see who this man is? Who is this man? It's Jesus. Okay. How do you know it's Jesus? Because you've read the Gospels 
and you have believed the report of the Lord, what the, what the word says about the gospel, and you recognize this is Jesus. Because if you fast forward to when he was arrested and when he was beaten and when he was hung on a cross and bled out and naked and put in a grave, then you start making the, the connection, you know, that was Jesus. How do you know that? It's because you've believed the gospel. You've believed the report. hope that makes sense. Verse 6, but all of us are like sheep who've gone astray. And we've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him. God, Father God has laid on Jesus our stuff, our sin. Have you grasped that yet? That the only way we could be saved is if somebody would die for our sin. And there was only one person that can do that, and that was God himself because he's the only perfect one. I hope you see that. So, this is why he have to come. So if you're a sheep in here today and you've went astray, here's the good news. There is a shepherd that has come. Amen? If you are a sheep in here and I was one of those, I had went astray, I was doing my own thing. But then I realized the shepherd had come that would show me where the still waters and the green grass was. That he would prepare a table before me in amongst my enemies. And we would go through the valley of the shadow of death and we wouldn't fear any evil. We got a shepherd, y'all. So here's what I want to do today. I want to look at... The name of my uh, uh, message is uh, Believe the Report, okay? Uh, believe God's Report, by the way. That's what I'm talking about, okay? So here's what I'm saying. Okay, hear me, hear me, hear me. I want to show you the report of salvation, which I've already started doing that, okay? And if you believe what the Bible says about salvation, okay? Anybody believe what the Bible says about salvation? Okay, if you believe that... Why don't you believe the rest of the Word of God that tells us about everything else? Because here's what I see these days and times. People show up like they're at the Chinese buffet with God's Word. All right, let's lay it out. Fried rice, right? Got the chicken. Oh, here we go. Egg rolls. Got all the stuff you like. Let's lay it out. And then you got some stuff you don't even know what it is. You're like, I ain't one of that. Okay. How can we, and we know we go in, we get this, we get this, we get this, we get this, go to the thing, and they make you get another plate. You come out, you get this, you get this, you get this, right? But there's some things that you don't pick up. There's some things that you don't choose, right? Why? Because you don't like them. The Bible is not like that. If you're going to believe the report on salvation, are you going to believe the report on everything else? We cannot pick and choose in the Word. So, whose report are you believing today? Turn to Numbers 21. Does this, make, does this sound like something you want to do? That was three of you. That's what we're going to, Next Sunday, we're going to start. We're going to start over here with Shannon. And we're going, we're going to let Shannon preach and then go to uh, the Lynn. And, we, we pray, and then we're going to let y'all have a turn on a Sunday. And then when we all get done, then you'll see when you, <laughs> you, <laughs> how important it is for somebody to act like they're listening. Anyway. <laughs> so be working on one, Shannon. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. Numbers 20. Okay, let me ask you this, and we'll read this. How many times have you... Uh, Tried to put something together without the owner's manual. <laughs> I've, I'm guilty. Like I had a swing set looking like Shrek one time. It was bad. <laughs> but <laughs> I just knew like my pride wouldn't let me look at them. But man, I've changed from that. But here, here's what that is. Okay, there's somebody, the manufacturer made that swing set. Some, somebody, you know, say, hey, this, you know, made it. Okay, they tell you, since they're the creator of that thing, they tell you in the owner's manual how to put it together. It's a no-brainer, even though sometimes it's hard to figure it out. Okay, all right. You do realize this Bible is the report of the manufacturer. 
creator God. Okay? He started this thing. He put us together. So what you're reading is the report of the manufacturer. It is what we look at as our owner's manual. That make sense? Okay. 21 verse 5. People spoke against God. Against Moses. We don't like what you're doing, God. Moses, why you bring us out of Egypt? Watch this. Why you brought us up out of Egypt to die? We're out here in the woods. Doesn't it sound like people? There's no food, no water. no. Our soul loathes this worthless bread. <laughs> you ever just had to eat bread, mustard sandwiches, you know? You remember that? Or just, you know, you get sick of that stuff. Anyway, they forget that God is sending angel food cake from heaven every day except Sunday, right? They, they gather twice on Saturday for Sunday, and that's a miracle. I mean, how would you like to walk outside? Like, it just, I, I see it coming down in those little parachutes, you know? <laughs> and they're saying I hate this we've eaten so much of it I just hate it, it they're complaining at least you're eating you're in the wilderness nothing around at least you're eating yeah. alright so this <laughs> the Lord didn't like this so watch what he does now notice what they're doing they had no food no water uh, we mad about the angel food cake and and we just, we just mad. Why are you, why you bring it? Listen, they came out of slavery, and now they're free in the wilderness, and they're like, let's go back to slavery. It's just silly. So the Lord says, oh, okay. So he sent fiery serpents. <laughs> Good trade, huh? So the Lord sent, verse 6, sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people. And many of the people of Israel died. Okay. Uh, therefore, watch though, they're quick learners. The people came to Moses. <laughs> what do they say? We've sinned. <laughs> We've spoken against the Lord and against you, and we pray to, the, pray to the Lord that he will take away the serpents from us. And so Moses prayed for the people. Okay, think about it. All right, they're being critical, but then they become quick learners, right? No, they have food and water storage, sickness. Now the devil's been let loose on them. Uh, now it's time to search your heart and repent. I mean, to me, that's a no-brainer, right? Uh, I want to put that on the screen, though. The first, sign of the first sign of change in our life is repentance. Notice what they're doing. I mean, they, they're quick learners. They're like, uh, we messed up. We're sorry, Lord. Now we're looking at salvation, so, for you and I, our first step is to realize um, we need to change. And the first sign of change is repentance. That's a 180. Okay? That's like, hey, this, there's chaos in my life. There's a reason for that because I'm dragging myself down. Make sense? Rep what does repentance mean? It means you turn from. You turn from, okay? Now, I'm gonna, let me give you a hint. When things in your life are breaking down, I mean, no food, no, no, no you know, all they're doing, all this, they, they, they're like, something wrong, and then here come the, the devil's loose on them. Something's not right. That's when you have to consider your ways. Maybe God is trying to get your attention. And listen, the answer the answer is not going to be found anywhere else but God. Don't miss that. The answer is not going to be found in other stuff. It's going to be found in God only. Okay, watch what God does. This is, this is very important. We're going to compare this to our life in a minute. He does, God doesn't remove the problem at all. He just brings the solution. You hear that? He, he, doesn't, he, watch it, he doesn't remove it. He brings a solution in the midst of the problem. Okay, watch verse 8. Lord said to Moses, Okay, you make a fiery serpent, 
set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, looks at it, he looks at it, he looks at it, shall live. Notice that he didn't take away the fiery serpent because they still biting folk. But he said, if you're bitten, look at the pole. Look at the snake on the pole. They still use this today in the medical field as a symbol. You might know what I'm talking about? Okay. So Moses made a bronze, somebody say bronze, bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was if a certain had, serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at it, at the bronze serpent, what happened? He lived. Okay. Notice something here. God made this personal. If you look at it, if you look at it, if you look at it, you're going to live. But you got to look at it. Not your mom and daddy. Go, your mom and daddy can't go look at it for you. It says you got to look at it. Make sense? It's personal. Okay. Now, listen to me, listen to me, listen. Put yourself in their shoes this day. Y'all running around getting bit by snakes. We all run around getting bit by snakes. And we know that if we look, because Moses, the leader, God told Moses, if we look at that snake on a pole, we'll be, I know it sounds silly, silly, but that's the cure. Now, think about all the people you love are there with you too. And you knew they had been bitten. And they're living in these tents and all around. Because remember, they're in the wilderness. When you found out that you looked at the pole and where you had been bitten was healed, what would be the first thing you did? Hey, come look at the pole. 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 Tell your neighbor right now, look at the pole. Come look at the pole. Some of y'all didn't do it. Come look at the pole. Do you love them or not? Tell them to come look at the pole. See what I'm saying? Okay. Wouldn't you make sure they, need, they knew what the cure was? Wouldn't you make sure that they knew there was a cure? Okay. You sure? Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. All right. Turn to John 3. Let's bring it together. What's the cure? Looking at look, in, those, in that day, not today. You don't go out there and look at snakes on. Look at the pole. Okay. If you've been bitten by a snake, bitten by the fiery serpent, look at the pole. Snake on the pole. Some of you men that looked at other things on poles. That's why you've been. That's how. That's that's how you know you was bitten by the snake. You'll get that later. John 3. True. We, pre we preach the truth up in here. Okay, let's bring it together. You, this is going to make some sense right here. John 3. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And then you go to the third chapter. Verse 14. Ready? Amen. Amen. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, why was he lifting it up? People look at it and say, right? Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Who's the Son of Man? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. Verse 15. That whoever believes in him, who? Jesus, should not perish but have eternal life. Amen. You hear this, y'all? Okay. Why is Jesus comparing himself to a snake on a pole? Because the snake on the pole was the cure for those that were bitten by the enemy. Okay? That makes Jesus the cure for those that are bitten by sin. Whoop, there it is. Now, notice the similarities here. Are y'all getting this? Or do you see, do you see, you're making a connection? Okay. Thank you, John, for putting that in there. Led by the Holy Spirit, put that in there. As Moses lift up the snake, Jesus was lifted up. What is he talking about? On the cross. Okay. Okay. 
Notice the similarities there. It says, Whos whoever believes. Now, old school King James says, whosoever. Okay? Whosoever believes. What does it say? Whoever believes should not perish but have eternal life. That's salvation right there. Okay? Okay. What did it say about looking at the pole? It says, whoever looks at the pole is saved from a snake bite. Again, just like that, Jesus is making it personal. You personally, not your mom and daddy, your grandma, your grandpa, your best friend. You, you, every single person in here, every person that's ever walked this earth has to make the decision to look to Jesus for yourself. You see how personal that is? He is your personal Lord and Savior. His name, Yahweh, Jehovah, which you know what that means? He's our personal God. He's your God. He's my God. That's why he's the great I am. Now watch this. Let me throw this in there. This, 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 is, this is just an extra little thing right here. The color bronze was always compared to judgment. Okay? The serpent being on the pole means that the serpent was being judged. Make sense? Okay. When Jesus was lifted up on the cross, he judged the serpent of old, the devil. Does this make sense? Okay. One day he will throw him in the lake of fire and destroy him forever because he has been biting and lying and stealing and devouring his people. But listen. What I tell you, when God answered their prayer to Moses, he didn't pull, take the problem away. He just added the solution. The devil has not been taken away yet. His main tool has been taken away, death, eternal death. But he's just added the solution. We still live amongst the biting of sin, but now we have the solution to that sin. Isn't that good news? Isn't that the best news ever? So, guys, this makes the cross of Jesus Christ the focal point of all history, of all future, of all right now. It's the focal point of salvation. It's the focal point of purpose, the focal point of provision, the focal point of God providing and protecting. It's the focal point of our peace. The song says our hope. Our joy is the focal point of everything. 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 So let me ask you something. You're like, I know, I know all this, Brother Scott. Well, let me ask you. Do you know somebody that's been bitten? Do you know anybody that's been bitten by the devil? Do you know anybody that's been bitten by the devil and saturated with their poison? With his poison, his lies and deception. What does that mean? Well, the devil still got you thinking that it's all about you. The devil still has you thinking that you need something else to add to your life to make life more enjoyable. Whether it's an addiction or a habit. You see what I'm saying? He, he, can, he can really lie to you and have you deceived thinking you need that. But in all reality, all you need is Jesus. Because it says if you put him first, you seek him first, then everything else falls exactly where it needs to be. Do you believe that? Okay, okay. Let me go back to that question then. Do you know somebody that's been bitten? Do you know somebody that's been being deceived right now by the devil's poisonous lies? Okay. Didn't, you, didn't we say earlier, <laughs> okay, we've just been healed by the snake on the pole. Now we go tell it. Right? So if we've been, anybody in here been healed by Jesus? Anybody been eternally healed by Jesus? You've, you, you've, you've turned to Jesus and he's healed you from the bitten part of your sin, the sin stuff? You know what I'm saying? Have, is that you? So now, shouldn't we turn and go and be telling the ones that have been bitten that the cure is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who was raised up on the cross, who died and got up out of the grave three days later? Shouldn't we be telling them that? Yeah. 
Are we making sure they know the cure? We ought to put that on a shirt. <laughs> Are you sure they know the cure? And have a cross on there. Somebody work on that. Anyway, <laughs> that'll preach. Hey, write this in your notes. Be the whosoever. Be the whosoever because we are the whosoevers. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's us, right? Is that you today? Romans 10. Go to your right. Are y'all getting anything out of this yet? Okay. Now watch this. Yeah, make that sure. Are you, are you sure you know the cure? Are you sure you know the cure? Put Jesus on there. Cross. Man. John 3, 16. I mean, come on. No, John 3, 14, 15, and 16. Just go. And then may add 17, too. Because then it talks about no condemnation. Just put the Bible on there. <laughs> <laughs> Refer to the word. Okay. There's a difference. Listen to me, church, because I don't want you to get tripped up on this. There's a difference between looking at a snake on a pole and believing in a Savior. All right? Romans 10, look at verse 8. So Paul says, what does it say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. What word is he talking about? The word of faith, which we preach, what I'm preaching today. Okay, here's the report of that word. You ready? If you confess, confess, somebody say confess, confess. with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe, somebody say believe, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. saved. Ain't that the best news you've ever heard? Yeah. For with your heart you believe unto righteousness and with your mouth you confess made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Best news ever. Okay. All right. Let's go down this list right quick. We talked about it earlier. What is the first thing the people of Israel did when they found out the Lord sent the serpents? They repented. Okay. Church, that's the first and foremost thing. I don't know where you are in your life right now, and you may know the Lord. You, know, you may know the Lord, but you've gotten off track. Listen. Same thing. You need to turn. You need to turn around. Lord, I am so sorry. I've let this own me and deceive me and lie to me. And I believe it. Listen, turn around. Turn around for your sake, for your family's sake, for the future, how God's going to use you's sake. You do realize it ain't over at salvation. Okay? Repent. Listen, here... <laughs> Can you see your life right now? Okay, picture yourself standing before the Lord right now. How do you see yourselves compared to holiness? I mean, when Isaiah did it, he's like, woe is me. I'm toe up from the floor up. That's my version of that. He said, he said, he says, I'm, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I come from a people who have un, of unclean lips. Like he, like he was just devastated when he stood before the Lord. We've got to realize we're nothing without Him. Okay, repent. Okay, what's, what's, what does it say there in verse 9? Uh, uh, it says, uh, confess. Don't miss this. You know, I, I hear this talk. And I hear that, you know, all you got to say is, is, Lord Jesus, just confess Him. Listen, yeah, yeah, that's what you say. But listen, that's not all there is to it. Watch this. It says, confess. This is verse 9. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Somebody say, Lord Jesus. Boy, you hear that bass in here then? Boy, the men talking on that one. Lord. I love that. Lord means owner, boss, and ruler. It's, it's cool that men were louder that time. Because men, it's hard for us to say that we're not the owner, boss, and ruler. Mm-hmm. Okay? At some point, we got to humble ourselves and say, we ain't in control. You the little L of your house, the little Lord. He's the big L, right? 
Listen, okay? So it says the key here is you confess the Lord with your life. What does that mean? Listen, it's confessing that, hey, white flag, I'm surrendering. I'm coming to you, Lord. I'm nothing without you. I can't do this on my own, Lord. Please take my life. Jesus, take over. Listen, there's somebody on the throne of your life right now. It's either you, you and the devil, or Jesus. Who, who in your life right now, if you look up on the throne of your heart right now, who would be sitting there? And I know I'm as guilty as you are. I'll pull Jesus down and say, I got it for a while. You go take a break. He doesn't need a break. I'm guilty of that. I ain't going to lie. I got you, Jesus. Let me have it for a little while. And that's when my life goes, right? Try that. Anyway. Now, confess. None of of y'all did it. (laughs) Spit spit on yourself. Listen, I don't think this confessing Lord Jesus is a one-time thing. By saying this, I mean it should become a lifestyle. I'm not saying every day you got to get up, Lord, save me. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this should be a lifestyle of you confessing the Lord of your life. Everybody should know that Jesus is now the Lord of your life. Just the way you carry yourself. You confess to others that God is good. Look what he's doing in my life. Chris Bohannon, where is he? Right there. He said he prayed with 65 people yesterday. Wasn't it 65? 65 people yesterday. He let 65 people know, individually people like this, like this, that, that Jesus was the Lord of his life. Amen. Isn't it all? Now, what's the next thing? It says, believe in your heart. This is, this is not hard. Believe, 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 believe what? Believe the report of the Lord. What? what? Have faith that Jesus really did die for you and get up out of the grave. No questions asked. I don't believe what Darwin says. I don't believe that people, you know, we come from SpongeBob. I don't believe any of that stuff. Those are theories. I don't believe something blew up. I mean, if it did, who lit the fuse? Scientists may have something about the gases and all, but don't you know when when the Lord said, hey, let there be light, let the earth be light, there's going to be some gases going on (laughs) and not just out of people's rear end. (laughs) Have faith. Listen, when you are you, do you really believe? Do you have faith that God is who He says He is? Do you have faith that this is His Word? Do you believe that mercy and grace is a real thing? Do you have faith in, in that He has made you right with God? That you ain't got to walk around scared all the time. Listen, but listen to me. Please don't miss this because this is where a lot of people mess up. Your salvation is not the end game. Once you get saved, hey, I'm saved, let me go live my life. That's not it. It's just the beginning. I've said this to you before, and I want to put it on the screen, but salvation is twofold. We have been saved from our sin, but we've been saved to a relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you see that? Listen, yes, saved from our sin. Hallelujah, this is awesome. Doesn't stop there. Now you're in a relationship with God. What does that mean? He wants you to be a representative. He wants you to represent Him. He wants you to lead, we learned learned this last week, to be the image of God. To take what we learn and go and love. and Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's what we learn every week. And listen, this belief, when you believe... True belief turns into worship. I'm serious. I don't know how someone could not sit there this morning when we were talking about Jesus being our living hope and the goodness of God was chasing us and for God so loved the world. And all those wonderful worship songs this morning, how could we sit there and nothing not just be stirred up in you? Belief, true belief is going to be going, amen, amen, amen. You may have it going on on the inside, but you, I know it's wanting to bust out in you. It's got to be. It's got to want to bust out, 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 out of them. And it's just it's worship. That's praise. It's not nothing weird. It's something that we see all through the Bible. It says to praise Him with everything we got. Anything you want to bang on, praise Him. Praise Him in your dance. 
Praise him with your words. Praise him with lifted hands. Whatever. You can't help. When you find out that you have been saved from your sin and saved from eternal death and he's giving you peace, love, and joy, and hope, and all this, that should just well up in you. It should make your days be good. No matter what's going on beside you, your days ought to be good. Why? Because the goodness of God has surrounded you. This is belief. Let me show you something. Luke 23. Go to Luke 23. right? Whole Romans. We're going to come back and close right there. Oh, man. Luke 23. So go backwards. You was at John. Then go back one more. From John. Luke 23. I want to show you this. I want to show you this so bad. I've been waiting to show you this all day. You do realize belief. There's, 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 in your faith, there's, there's action to that. Not that you're working your way to heaven. That's already been established through Jesus Christ. He's your salvation. But, but, the, but the action part of that is you're just burning on the inside and you're compelled to share with your buddies and your friends and, 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 and what, what they can have. If you see somebody all white walking down like this, always negative, always critical, you know, don't you want to come up beside them, man? Listen, listen to what I got to say. This will brighten your day. This will not just brighten your day, but it will brighten your life. Amen. There shouldn't be any sour pusses in Jesus. Put that on a shirt. <laughs> okay. Verse 39, Luke 23. Listen, Jesus is right. Okay, if you had spikes driven through your hands or wrist, however it was done, and your feet, you've been jabbed with a sword and you're sitting there, would you want to be talking to anybody? Just let me die, right? He still had the strength to say, Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. But did you know Jesus wasn't alone? Watch this. There's criminals on each side of him. Criminals. Right? Verse 39. One of the criminals who were hanging there blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. I mean, that's a good angle to come at him, isn't it? I mean, he said, If you, if, if you are the Christ, if, you see the doubt there? If you're the Christ, save us and save yourself. He's trash talking him. But watch what the other one said. Now, both of them are criminals, right? He rebuked him. He says, do you not even fear God, seeing you're under the same condemnation? In other words, you're hanging here too. He said, we, speaking of the two criminals, indeed justly, we're here for a reason. We receive the due reward of our deeds but this man, see the capital M, has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, assuredly I say to you today, today, today you'll be with me in paradise. Ooh. Okay. I don't want to focus on the blasphemy over there right now because he just jaw jacking Jesus. Let's look at this man, and I see myself as this man. He sees himself as a sinner because he did say this. He's repenting because he says, I'm hanging here justly. Like, I should be dying. Make sense? Um, that's repentance, y'all. Okay? Then he says in verse 42, Lord. You see it? What does Lord mean? Owner, boss, ruler, master. Right? He's calling Jesus Lord. He's confessing that with what? His mouth. And then he says in verse 42, when you come into your kingdom, wait, 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 wait. Ain't you dying on the cross? Yeah, but he believes there's something after that, Amen. him coming into his kingdom. Do you see the three right there? He's repented, he's confessed, and he is believing. 
What is the result of that, my friend? What does he say in verse 43? Today you will be with me. Paradise. Isn't that good? That criminal is a, is, is a picture of me and you. It's a beautiful picture. So, salvation. Run to Psalm 103 and then we'll go to uh, Romans. We'll be done. Nearly finished. A few minutes. Psalm 103. Let me show you something. This may set us up for later. I don't know if it's going to be a series or a one-time deal. We'll see what the Lord does. Psalm 103. Watch this. Salvation. The actual word, go look it up. It really means a package deal with benefits. It's not that you're just saved, redeemed, made right. There's actually benefits to your salvation. It's a package deal. King David speaks of a few of these benefits right here. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? You're saved from your sin, but you're also saved to a relationship. And once you walk in this relationship with Jesus Christ, there's benefits of that. A lot of us, the reason why we get insurance policies is just because if we have a wreck, we want everything to be taken care of, right? That's why you pay them high premium. Anyway, do you realize there are a lot of benefits to having insurance too? There's other benefits to that. You can get some tickets and stuff. Like I'm serious. Free rental cars and stuff. Anyway, I'm going to use that in a minute. <laughs> okay, listen. Psalm 103, right? He's blessing the Lord for some reason. He's saying that, it, that, that the Lord is holy. Watch what he says. Bless, first two, bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not his what? Benefits of what? Salvation, right? Benefits. Be, 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 benefits. Okay. David is saying he knows the Lord. He, he's talking about his benefits. Okay, what is his benefits? Who forgives all of our iniquity? Moving forward, guys, there's grace. Moving forward, there's grace. Not getting what we deserve. Listen, you're not going to give your life to the Lord. I mean, in a perfect world, yeah, you're not going to give your life to the Lord and just live holy from then on. There will be times that you're still trying to get this thing right. And you mess up. Not because you put the Lord on the sidelines and went and messed up on purpose. That's a whole different thing. You know what I'm saying? It's when you mess up. When you get angry, when you're bitter, when you're worried, when you slip up and maybe do something you used to do or whatever, grace is there. Amazing grace is there. Not that, not, again, not that you're going out and say, hey, I'm forgiven. I'm just going to live it up and just do it to it. No, 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 no. That's a wrong mindset. That means you probably didn't mean what you did when you come to the Lord. You come to the wrong reason. Don't be coming to the Lord just so you can go do things. Like you used to. That's totally for the wrong reason. But the grace is there when you need it. Who heals all of our diseases. Now you can make, that could be physical. That could be spiritual, physical, you know, any of that, emotional. There's all kind of diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Listen. Think of what the word construction means. And what the word, word destruction means. The enemy tears our life down. We're demolished. It's been demo day with him. Now we're being constructed. Notice what it said. He redeems us from destruction, from the wasteland, and he begins to build us up. We are a work in progress, right? We, we, are, his, we are his workmanship. You are still being worked on today. You are being constructed you're, you get a, get a, there's another shirt. Under construction by Jesus. We're going to just become a t-shirt company down here. But you know what I'm saying? You're, you're under construction. Watch verse, uh, I'm still the same verse. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Wait a minute, this thing's just shifted. It's talking about how you act now. Loving people, kind with people, showing people mercy. It's funny, we talked about this Sunday school this morning. Who satisfies your mouth, watch out now, with good things. So that your youth 
is renewed like the eagles. Let me show you, share this with you right quick. An eagle does a thing called molting, and he picks out dead feathers because new ones come back in its place. He picks out the dead feathers. Here's what the Lord is saying. I'm going to pick out your dead feathers for you. I'm going to pick out that stuff that's in the past, those addictions, those habits, so you can fly now. You ain't got all that dead stuff lay, holding you down anymore. <laughs> Amen? So these are just a few benefits. You can just keep reading in your own time. Listen, don't go through your life now, your, sa your saved, redeemed life, not knowing the benefits. I knew a lady in a wreck, had somebody come pick her up, Left a car at the body shop. She went home, suffered for two or three, four or five months. No ride. People going to pick her up and get her. Going to pick her up and get her. Go and pick her up and get her. You know, and she just she just can't do anything. You need to go to the grocery store. She had to get somebody to come over there and get her. She got to the thing to pick her car up, and they told her. She was talking about not having her car. She said, "He said you didn't look at your insurance policy." He said. You had free rental car on here. She went five, six months without a car because she didn't know her benefits. I wonder how many people, how many of us are going through our life knowing Jesus as our Lord and Savior, but we're struggling because we don't realize what our benefits are. Mm. All right, I'm going to close. I figured y'all get up and shout on that one. Okay, Romans 10. I'm going to leave this with you. This is starting 12. Okay. 10, 12. Romans 10, 12. There's no distinction between a Jew or a Greek. Here's what he's talking about. There's no distinction in black, white, red, orange, Heinz 57, none of that. We are all children of God. Notice what he said. For the same Lord, Lord, Lord. Over all is rich to all who call upon him. Doesn't matter who you are. Watch this, verse 13. Greatest, one of the greatest uh, verses in the Bible. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Did you hear that? Now, you got that. You call it on the name of the Lord. Lord. Owner, boss, ruler. Mm, lifestyle. It ain't people to say, oh, you can just say Lord. You say that's not what it's about. It's a lifestyle. Here we go. Watch this, verse 14. How then, though, shall they call on Jesus in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? And he goes into a beautiful verse that is written, How beautiful are the people that, feet of the people who preach the gospel. Okay. I want to put this on the screen because I, sh I saw this and it just blows me, blew me away. Okay, I want to go backwards in these two verses right here. But I'm going to do it on the screen so you'll see it. Okay, and I'm going to walk you through it. You ready? The sent people will preach. Those preached to in love will hear. The ones who hear will have a chance to believe. And if they believe, there's a good chance that they will call on Jesus to save them. Now, y'all knew that was weak. I want you to read that. I'm going to read it again. Listen, I want you to take your phone out. I want you to click that picture of that and put it on Facebook today. Okay? But I'm going to read it to you again. Listen. This is you and I. If you know the Lord, you are sent. Who in here knows you're sent to shine a light? Amen. If you're sent, then you should preach. Preaching doesn't mean you have to be up here. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about share your testimony. Share what God's doing in your life with somebody. Okay? Okay? Okay, if you do that, and you do it in love, 
then those that are preaching, you, you preach to, they're going to hear you. Okay? But you, they got to hear first. And then the ones who hear, guess what? They just might believe you. And if they believe you, there's a good chance they may call on Jesus to save them for themselves. It's brilliant. Ain't God good? All the time. All the time, baby. So I'm going to say this. We'll bow our heads. Believe this report today, my friend. Believe this report today. Believe the report of God's word. Put all your chips in and build your life on this foundation, this cornerstone right here today. And watch what God does. If you would, bow your heads. I want to ask you right quick, if you can, nobody moving around. And I want you to think of something. Please hear me with everything you got. It costs Jesus everything to purchase our salvation. I want you to think just for a moment. Have you ever went to the store and bought something and for whatever reason you didn't make it home with it? And you don't you don't know you don't know if you left it at the cash register or not. All you know is you didn't make it home with it. Has that ever happened to you? Has Jesus paid for something that he's not going to make it home with? Guys, I hope not. He did die for us when we were all sinners. He's purchased us. But sadly, the Word does teach us He's not going to make it home with a lot of them. But I don't want to talk about them right now. I want to talk about you. I don't believe that you're here today by mistake. You found out today, if you were listening, that Jesus Christ loved you so much He died for you. That means He purchased your salvation. Have you said yes to Him yet? Is He going to make it home with you? Have you confessed Him as Lord of your life? Do you believe that He is the way of salvation? Do you believe that He died for you, that He got up out of the grave on the third day? Do you believe that He has, has arrested death? And one day He's going to throw the devil in the lake of fire, that one day He's going to come back and get us and we would be with Him forever? Do you believe that? Do you believe that your last breath here is going to be your first breath and with the Lord? The first step of that is repenting and realizing you can't do this on your own. So, listen to me. Do you, this is a personal question, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Guys, I'm not talking about saying a prayer, walking up to the front. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm not talking about jumping through any hoops. I'm asking you right now, have you truly made Jesus the Lord of your life. Do you have a relationship with Him? That's the question on the floor. Maybe you have can say, yes, I have, Brother Scotty, but I sure have gotten away. 
listen to me, with nobody looking around. If that's you today, you you saying, I'm making Jesus the Lord of my life for the first time. Or I'm recommitting my life to him today, right now. If that's you, nobody looking around, just raise your hand up and say, that's me, Brother Scotty. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. You can put your hand down. Believers, listen to me. Are you reaching those who have been bitten? Are you reaching out to those that may not know the cure? Because guys, you do realize most folks ain't going to come up in a church house. That's why you're the church. This is not, this church building This is where the church gathers. But you're the church. I'm the church. We we go be the church out there. And we share the cure. And listen, listen, I'm going to say this and we're going to pray. If you believe the word of God about salvation, why not believe it for everything else it says in there? Father, I thank you for this time together. Oh, Lord. Your word says that the angels of heaven rejoice when a man or woman made in your image turns and gives their life to you. pray that you just show those that lifted their hands and those that just lifted their hands in their own heart and said that's me you show them how much you love them Lord I pray you show them that it's not the end it's just the beginning that this relationship is going to take them to New heights, joy and peace, a testimony. Lord, I thank you for what you shared with us today. It's good to be, it's good to remember how much you love us and what you've done for us. Lord, I thank you for the benefits of being a child of God. That you wouldn't just save us, but you'd give us a purpose. And you would give us your very own spirit. Guys, for you, you guys that lifted your hand for the first time today, God gives you his very own spirit to lead you and guide you, to comfort you. Know that. You've got access to the spirit of God now. Lord, what a gift. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would stand. Guys, let's use this time as a prayer, as worship, reflecting on the goodness of God, whatever is on your heart. you're one of those that raised your hand, man, really talk to the Lord now. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. Talk to Him like you've never been talking to Him before. He's right there. He's listening to you and He loves you and He's so happy there's a party going on right now. There's a party going on right now. Listen, if you got something burdening you down, anybody, won't you picture this altar as the feet of the cross? Come bring that mess down here and lay it at the feet of Jesus. You shouldn't be carrying that around. You, you, you're not equipped to carry that around. That's why you're struggling right now. Just bring it to Jesus. 
And if you need prayer for any anything, guys, I'd love to pray with you. Just follow that still small voice.